Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the different categories of machine learning. And we're going to learn the difference between supervised machine learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. All right. So let's recap what we um, uh, discussed in the previous lecture. We, uh, as you guys recall, that we, uh, that artificial intelligence is the science that enables computers to mimic human intelligence. And we, as I mentioned before, is that this basically, the AI represents the larger umbrella. So that's kind of, you know, the big umbrella in which machine learning, deep learning, and all the other stuff just lies underneath it, okay? So again, as I mentioned, within artificial intelligence, there is machine learning, which is a subset of AI that enable machines to improve at a given task with experience. Again, put please like 100 lines under the word experience. That's where all the kind of the core idea of machine learning. The more training data, the more input and output data, the more these algorithms will gonna become better and they'll be able to learn from experience, okay? So machine learning models actually classified into supervised learning unsupervised and reinforcement learning. So let's take a look at supervised. So training algorithms are being um, mainly rely on what we call it labeled input and output data. Think of it as, you know, like let's say you are teaching, for example, like a little kid, okay, um, how to walk, for example. So what you do is that you expose the kid, you know, to different what we call it training data, okay? So, for example, you tell them, okay, please, let's say, like, you know, like, stand up, you hold their hands, you, you try to show them, you know, through what we call it, like, like, label data, through input and output. Another, exam another example is, let's say, you're training a model to classify, let's say, images of cats. So, what you do is that you give, you know, the model images of certain cats, okay? with different poses, different lighting conditions. And every time you say, okay, when you see this cat, that means the label is cat. Or let's say the label is, let's say number four, for example. So that's what we call it labeled data. I go to the internet, I download, let's say 100 images. And I say, okay, when you see this image, that means cat. When you see this image, that means dog. When you see this image, that means like, let's say boat. Okay, and that's what we call it supervised learning. Okay, all right, so that's the first category, all right, and within this category, it's mainly divided into what we call classification, so you're actually classifying, let's say, certain images to certain classes, or what we call it regression, okay, and that's actually very important. So regression can be used to, let's say, predict a continuous output. For example, I wanted to predict the temperature, for example, let's say tomorrow, okay, to do this, I'm going to train a model that can predict a continuous output that can give me, let's say, tomorrow's temperature, let's say 25 degrees C, or 26, or 27, or 28. So we don't have different classes. We actually have a continuous output, okay? And that's what we call it a regression process. I'm going to discuss that in our case studies. Or classification, in which, you know, we have, let's say, three classes, cats, dogs, and let's say, mice. And these kind of the three classes were classifying images uh, according to them. All right, so that's what we call it supervised learning. The second category is what we call it unsupervised learning. In this it's basically um, way of learning, we don't have a label, okay? So there is no input output data, there is only input data. So training algorithms are being trained with no labeled data. It attempts at discovering hidden patterns within the image or within whatever data on its own. And that's really powerful. You can just, for example, feed it, let's say, images of cats, images of dogs, without saying what's in there, okay? And they will learn the features on their own, which is really scary, you know, if you think about it. And in the unsupervised learning, we know a certain category of it, so we'll call it clustering, which is simply just trying to cluster the inputs into different groups, okay? And I'm going to give you an example, actually, in this lecture uh, coming up soon. The third category within, you know, machine learning uh, umbrella is what we call it reinforcement learning, okay? And that's very, very powerful um, way of learning, which is what we call it, the, in which the algorithms take actions to maximize cumulative reward, okay? 
Again, please hang in there. I'm going to give you a detailed example coming up right now. So these are kind of the three categories of supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. So let's dig a little bit deeper into these algorithms and see what do they have. So first, regarding supervised learning, as I mentioned before, supervised learning can use tra basically training algorithms that rely on labeled input and output data. So for example, let's assume that I have this data set in which I am feeding these images to my model. And the model is supposed to predict a certain output based on these different classes. So for example, I have, let's say, t-shirt, trousers, dress, coat, sandal, and so on, sneakers, for example. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to feed the model input and output label data. So I'm going to say, okay, when you see this image, that means it's a sneaker. When you see this image, okay, that means it's an ankle boot. When you see this image, this actually means a t-shirt. When you see this image, that means it's a bag. And actually, this data set is um, a data set known as fashion data set. can be used as well to perform different classifications. All right. So this is what we call it, again, supervised learning. And in supervised learning, the performance is being assessed by comparing trained model predictions versus real output. So what's really powerful about supervised learning is that I can know if my model is messed up or no. If I, I can know if my model is accurate or not by comparing what the model is telling me versus the true label, because I know the truth. I have the ground truth in here, okay? So by comparing the model predictions to what the actual true label is, then I can know the performance of my model. The second category, as I mentioned within machine learning, is what we call it unsupervised learning, in which the algorithm is being trained using only input data. So we're just feeding in inputs, no label, and that's it. And the algorithm will attempt at discovering hidden patterns within the training data. And again, as I mentioned, unsupervised learning methods can analyze complex data that humans might find difficult to interpret. Let's take a look at an example. Let's assume that I have this input, okay? So I have a bunch of different classes. I have, let's say, stars here. I have circles, green circles. I have red stars. I have, let's say, blue rectangles. And I have, let's say, these like, you know, like purple um, um, crosses, for example. And what happened is you feed this input data to the unsupervised model. And the model will work by dividing this data into different clusters on its own. Again, there is no label. Okay, there's no, there's no true class. There is no ground truth. So the model will divide the data, the input, into different clusters like this. This will be the first cluster. This will be the second cluster. This will be the third cluster. So all the green circles are going to be grouped together. And then all the red, let's say, stars will be grouped together as well. All right? And that's what we call it unsupervised learning. The third category, which is what we call it uh, reinforcement learning, which is in reinforcement learning, it allows machines to take actions to maximize cumulative reward. Okay? So let's take a look at, you know, like a fun example. Let's assume that you have, let's say, a, a kid or a child, like a baby, and you leave that baby in, let's say, a room, okay? And that baby will try to discover, okay, the, the elements within the room, all right? Okay, so the baby first will go ahead and, let's say, touch a candle, okay? So they will get hurt, they will get burned. So what's going to happen is the baby will learn, moving forward, that, okay, there is a penalty associated with touching this candle. So you're never going to do it again, okay? And that's what we call it reinforcement learning. You are trying to maximize the cumulative reward, okay? So, for example, if this agent, we call it, you know, like, um, like that baby, for example, in, the, in our example, touches, let's say, the candle, he will going to get penalized by minus 10 points, okay? All right. And what's happened is, okay, the baby will go ahead, let's say, in the room, and let's say touch, for example, this, let's say, milk bottle, and he will see that, okay, maybe it tastes, tastes great, everything is good. So he will add, he will say, okay, I can repeat this again. You know, there is a positive reward that comes out of it. That's why he gets plus 10 points, okay? And that's what happened, you know, as, as the baby keeps moving and walking within the environment, which is, in this case, our room, he will be able to, okay, moving forward in the future, 
I will never ever gonna touch this candle ever again. However, moving forward, I will be able to capture, you know, like let's say this um, a bottle of milk, for example, because I know that, you know, it adds me positive reward moving forward. And that's why we call it reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is extremely powerful because, again, you can define your environment. You can put an agent within that environment and just define your uh, kind of function that maximizes cumulative reward and it works like magic. It's amazing, okay? So as you guys can see here, here I have my environment. Again, I have my agent, which is my baby here in this example. The agent will perform an action in that specific environment. Let's say touches, let's say um, that candle or maybe grab the bottle of milk, and then he will get a reward out of it. So the environment will reward the agent by giving him certain points, either plus or minus. And through this interaction by the agent taking action in the environment, the environment is replying back to him by reward, then he can improve through experience as well. So again, as I mentioned, reinforcement learning allows machines to take actions to maximize cumulative reward. Reinforcement algorithms learn by trial and error through reward, through reward and penalty, okay? And again, there are two elements. There's the environment, which let's say the room, and we have a learning agent, which is let's say a baby in this example. And the environment reward the agent for correct actions and penalizes them for wrong actions. Based on their reward and penalty, the agent will be able to improve its environment knowledge to make better decisions in the future. All right? Okay. All right, great. And that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's recap. So in this lecture, we discussed the overall categories of machine learning. As I mentioned, there is supervised, unsupervised reinforcement. In supervised, we have labeled data. Unsupervised, we don't have labeled data. We only have input data. And reinforcement learning, we try to maximize cumulative reward. And as I mentioned, within the supervised, there is classification and regression. And again, classification, we're classifying inputs to different categories or different classes. However, for regression, we are performing or trying to predict a continuous output, okay? And that's pretty important because in our case studies, we're gonna have an examples for regression and examples for classifications as well. And as I mentioned, in supervised, we have different images, we have labeled data, and we can feed all these inputs and outputs to our model, and the model can performance can be assessed by comparing the predictions versus our ground truth or our real output. In unsupervised learning, again, we're just going to feed in the input data, and the model will be able to find or discover hidden patterns within our training data, and basically just you know divide it into different clusters. And again, in unsupervised, there is no feedback because we don't have a ground truth, right? We just, the model will kind of predict on its own, okay, without um, feedback. The last category is what we call reinforcement learning in which the agent will work in environment and to try to maximize cumulative reward, okay? And that's all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you guys in future lectures.